some of the things we wanted to talk to you about really were um, to give you a perspective from where we're at as a GP Federation. So we, we believe that there's absolutely a clear need for urgent care to be redesigned in the world because the current system just isn't providing the care that people need, where they need it, when they need it. So if we look at the key parameters for me, um, the times that you wait in ED, in the emergency department at Arrow Park, are consistently unacceptable. Four hours is considered to be as long as anyone should wait in the, in the emergency department. And rarely does that figure in the emergency department get above 60%. It's not because they're not trying. That's because the system isn't around them. It's not working. What happens then is that you get almost a siege mentality amongst those who are working in there. If you've ever been there recently, you'll probably see it. There's a defeatism. You just can't win with the system going up all around you. Patient flow is paralyzed. That then reflects on what happens when you arrive at ED in an ambulance. So you, in your hour of need, you arrive in an ambulance at an emergency department and you're stuck on the trolley with the paramedic who brought you for over two hours consistently. And that then kicks back to what happens when your child gets hit by a car or your mum gets uh, an irregular fast heartbeat and you call 999. Where are the ambulances that park at Arrow Park because they can't get away? That to me is a failing system and that's what we have right now. So really, although everybody wants to protect what they've got and keep what they've got and not change things, if things don't change, that will be the reality for all of us in our hour of need. And that to me is unacceptable as a rural GP and as a rural resident. Now I don't think this urgent care redesign has all the answers right now. But I think what it does have is a starting point for us to change the system to a system that works for everyone better. And I think there are some difficult questions and there are some really difficult decisions because we can't have it all. We haven't got unlimited staff, we haven't got unlimited resources, and we haven't got unlimited time to get it right because people are already dying because of this failing system that we're in. And that is not good for any of us. We are, I think, in a comparatively strong position as far as the nation is concerned. So people have talked about how many GPs we have. We have a really good cohort of GPs. Practices are not closing their doors because there's no GPs there. I'm not saying that everyone's got all the GPs they want and they're all the quality they need. And there is workforce development to be done. But we're starting from a strong point. We've got great nurses working in loads of great places. So nobody's disputing the good work that's done in these places, but how is that all coming together to make a system that works? The answer at the moment, I would say, is that it isn't. So our view on the current consultation is that it's a good starting point, um, and it does call out some difficult decisions to be made. I get that transport's not great on the world, but we're not talking about Erdale, where there's hundreds of miles between, between places. There is a, there, there is, there, there is a concurrent plan to create neighbourhoods across the world, nine neighbourhoods, so each, each area has its own health service within that area. That has got to be the way to go, and that is then supported by four localities, which we all know, Wallasey, Birkenhead, West, where things that need to be on a, a bigger footprint can be done with one central place in the middle where you only go if that's the only place that can deal with you. We want to keep people away from Arrow Park. It's the last place anyone should want to be. If, if you're at Arrow Park, you have to be there because you really need to be there. And the way to do that is, is on the process that we're on, which is building neighbourhoods, building a local offer, but building a local offer that works for all nine neighbourhoods, not just the two or three that have got something special or the one or two that have got something very special. So there's nine. What about the ones that haven't got anything right now? Do we leave them, continue with nothing? Give them something special. Uh, and that is what this is attempting to do. Um, and, and, and I'm sure that everybody is open to, to ideas about if there's something better out there. Um, we've got a lot of questions about what, what happens work, so what services are delivered at what sites, and those questions that can't be answered at this point, I think there is a lot more work to be done. We've also got some concerns about um, the consultation that um, has been designed, decided on 
only comparing the existing services and, and maybe less of what could be. But we also recognise there's a lot of constraints in what has to be delivered nationally. So there is a there is a, a challenge there between what we want to do locally and what we have to do nationally. And we have to unpick some of that a little bit more than we have so far. Um, and the, the bottom line for this is, I mean, I'm a, I'm a local person. This is where I've grown up. I'm 51 years in this area. I'm a local resident and I work here. This is my health service and this is my place. I want it to be good. I don't want to work in a place that's paralyzed. When I have a patient at 6 o'clock in their house with chest pain and I call an ambulance because I'm a GP and it's okay to leave a GP with a patient, I don't want to be left there for two hours waiting for an ambulance. That's unacceptable. So that's what's happening regularly now. So we need to do something. And I think this is a start of something. I think there are a lot of other questions about the figures that we've seen that we could go around and, and, and argue about. I'm not sure what the value of that is. But I definitely think that same day appointments with a GP is something that nearly every single patient has said. That's what they would like to see. Now, David Cameron, I went for it. He promised everyone would see your GP seven days a week. So there's a lot of problems. That will never happen. But what we've got with new technology is we've got the ability for you to see a GP who has your clinical record, who is effectively your GP at that time, seven days a week. We've already got that in place. This is new technology. Allow your, your personal medical record to be viewed by the GP who's seeing you. That's a huge improvement on where we've ever been before, and it opens up huge possibilities for us. So there are ways that more appointments can be delivered across neighbourhoods or mine by that, by that method. So what I would say is let's, let's embrace the opportunity to change, let's look for where we can make things better, because we don't have unlimited resources, whether that's money or whether that's people, and we don't have unlimited time. Thank you. Um, is there any, any more of the presentation? Would you like to come in on that at all? Or? No, I think, I think the key thing for us is that we hope that this is a real consultation um, and that views will be listened to. Certainly, we've gone out to our members and um, we are consulting with them to, to get some feedback. Um, we don't think, we do think that the options given in the consultation are very limited. Um, I think that there should be the opportunity for local clinicians to be involved in, in working on what the design is going to be. And I believe from what we've heard from the CCG that we will be given that opportunity. Right, thank you both. What I will do, because we've got two GP federations here today, I think we should now be the second GP federation. And so if you've got a pressing question now, I would ask that you jot it down. Um, and then um, and then ask it at the end of that. So thank you very much. And um, we probably may well call you back for um, um, the questions. So we now have um, Dr. Abby Rothdarney from GPW Federation, and I believe you also have uh, Miriam, sorry, Alan Bryce and Elizabeth Hodgson from the Patient Participation Group. Thank you. Do you want to get that? Good evening, Chair, and good evening, Councillors. Thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to uh, do a short presentation. Uh, we'll start off. I just want to clarify right at the outset that we, there are some minor modifications made to the presentation that was submitted to you in the papers. There's no fundamental difference, there is some semantics, but I understand that it might not have been circulated anyway. Thank you. Could I just ask you to perhaps move a little bit closer to the mic? Yeah. I'm aware there's a few people that can't hear. Thank you. And um, we should ask as well, um, do you have any other declarations of interest that you want to make yeah, at this point? I do that, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm a GP, but I'm also, my practice is a provider of the minor injury services at Miriam and at Parkfield Medical Centre. Um, that is, I get that interest. Um, I'm also the executive lead for the Rural GP Federation that represents 25 practices. I will start with Alan Grice and then. Yeah. <coughs> Good evening, Councillors. I hope everybody can hear me. That's okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alan Grice. I'm the chair of the Million Patient Participation Group 
I'm also a member of the Middle Teeth and Federation Commission whilst this here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have a script prepared tonight, and some of the things I've heard have made me think I need to go off script a little bit. I'm sorry about this. Uh, I keep hearing the word consultation. My understanding of consultation is it's a two way listening process, and you adapt your environment on the basis of that. <coughs> Um, Ms. Evans has, has, has said she genuinely wants to consult. Um, I'm not sure, is consultation just listening or is consultation actually acting? If consultation is acting, then you need to act and you need to listen a bit more. Um, the CCG have given us just two options. They've admitted it themselves, they've only given us two options. If you ask someone a closed question, you get the answer you want. So if you say to somebody, do you want to say it's open 15 hours or 24? They're going to go, 24 please. If you say to them, do you actually mean that you want a 24 hour service and we'll start shutting down a bit of the service elsewhere in the system, they might give you a different answer. But if you don't give them the option, you get the answer you want. Um, the public really hasn't been given <laughs> The public really hasn't been given an option to make an informed choice. I genuinely believe this and, and Abby will, will go into some further detail later on. Um, the basis of the case for change. One of the things we keep talking again about these consultation processes, we keep getting told, told that there's, there's been massive consultation processes and they're, they're, they're listening to everything that people are saying. The early consultation process this year, which we're now being told was a listening exercise, not a consultation process, they surveyed 405 people. There's 319,000 people live on the world. And in two and a half months, they got 405 responses. To pick up on something Council Melbourne said before, if you're interested, there's a petition of 11,217 people who think your proposals are wrong. If you go to this, <laughs> we have, in fact, we actually asked, how did you come up with this, proposed, this idea that people are confused about the services, the, where they go for their services, what they do? And as a freedom of information result of that, what we got, one answer was, we never actually asked people if people were confused. We just drew that conclusion from all the other statements they gave us. Well, okay. So my attitude to that would be, I think, that this service won't work. Does that mean it's a valid response? It's not, because it needs to be addressed. The impact on the public we took was it lots of people have raised it already. The impact on the public, the public actually valued